guys you probably noticed that my youtube videos have changed direction a little bit still focusing on self-sufficiency and permaculture and living off the land but i'm trying to tell the story in a little bit um, of a different way which i've really been enjoying um, but i thought that once a week i would take you on a garden with me um, i try to work during the week so content creation, permaculture design, schooling the kids, cleaning the house, cooking all the food, um, preserving the food. It kind of happens Monday to Friday and then Saturday is usually a rest day because I'm wrecked today. <laughs> um, it's just the way it is. And so I thought I'd potter in the garden, so nothing too full on. There's a few things that need to be deadheaded. There's a few things that need to be pulled out. There's a few things that need to be harvested, a few things that need to be planted. Um, so it's just going to be a slow day doing all those sort of jobs in my garden. I thought I'd take you along and I'll see how you guys like it and we might do this weekly um, because this style of video is a whole lot easier to edit than um, the kind of story um, that I've been doing during the week. I don't know if you know but I started a podcast that will be launching the first Saturday of January which is the 2nd. Um, and I'll be talking to other people who are living a self-sufficient life. I'm just asking them questions about why they started doing it, how they do it, any tips for beginners and all that sort of stuff. And so on Saturdays, I'll be um, uploading the video version of that. So it's usually through a Zoom meeting. So I record the Zoom meeting and I'll be uploading that to YouTube as well as all the other podcast platforms. And then on Sundays, I thought I would trial this garden with me which I actually garden on the Saturday but I'll upload it on the Sunday so let's trial this and see how you like it and let's have a look at the disaster that my garden is but first I want to show you some real life garden fails so I've been super pushed for time and really struggling to get out planting stuff and the geese decided to break into the house paddock or this is the house, <laughs> into this um, zone one and eat all my seedlings. So I've got some melons here. I think there was a mix of rock melons and watermelons and then a whole heap of pumpkins um, that just got demolished by the geese. So that's pretty devastating. Um, today I will plant out some seeds in the garden directly and I think I have some more melons in the hot house, but I have a heap in the ground too. So the format of these videos will be more like Instagram stories. So it'll just be like little bits and little segments um, of my day in the garden and what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, how I'm doing it and all that sort of stuff. Um, hopefully you can learn something and enjoy gardening with me. <laughs> so it's fairly late. It's lunchtime. We haven't had lunch yet. We'll probably have a late lunch. And I thought I'd start in this area. So this is the marker garden, which is behind me. And then I've got the terraced section on this side. Yesterday while I was waiting for um, my computer to render a file, um, I deadheaded all the calendula. So I've been using a lot of calendula in my recent videos and um, if you deadhead them they will produce so much more um, blooms for you. They'll kind of looking a bit shaggy. They kind of look like they've got a bit of powdery mildew. Not sure if they can get that so I have to research it. But um, You'll start to get side shoots, bottom shoots, and a heap more buds if you um, deadhead it. So that's exactly what I did. I chopped and dropped, left it as it was. Heaps of seeds on the ground, so no doubt I'm going to get a heap of seedlings. But they should die with the traffic um, that we get in this area. And on the other side, I planted a heap of, um, oh look, one of the first ladybugs. Um, planted a heap of sunflowers and tomatoes. These were compost tomatoes that came up in my potting mix. Um, so I'm not sure which part I'm going to start in, but definitely need some work. I think I might start over here in the storm we had. Um, my big sunflower fell over, so I'm going to see if I can revive it, stand it up and stake it. So I'm not entirely sure if it's going to survive. This one is a cross-pollination between a giant, I believe it was a giant Russian or a giant pollenless, um, and an evening sun and the birds dropped the seeds and I don't know it germinated a year later or six months later I should say and it turned into a yellow 
um, sunflower, so not the red one, but the evening sunniest. And it's got all these multi stems, so it's pretty cool. Um, I do have some seeds because the big one on that side there has actually formed seeds. So if it does, you know, die, that's the only um, sunflower flowering at the moment, so I know it's not a cross pollination. And I can keep the seeds because I really like this new weird variety that I've created. So it's a general tidy today, pulling out random weeds as I see them. So Paul is tying up the sunflowers along the back of the fence. Some of them are flopping over um, with the northerly winds that we've been getting. We don't get northerly winds often, but we have a little bit this year, um, a heap last year. Um, and I am deadheading this spinach. I will be saving the seeds of another um, patch, but this one I'm just going to deadhead here. Got a beautiful purple collie there. These are purple Brussels sprouts. Hopefully we get some sprouts before all the caterpillars eat them and they bolt. I'm sure they'll bolt. And then over here, there's some huge cabbages especially this one here i reckon that's close to five kilos but i'm not going to pick them today because i don't have time to preserve them that's the job for next week but how good does it look in here so full so lush so many sunflowers hopefully this beauty makes it and the leeks are going to flower it's looking good i'm a fairly messy gardener so <laughs> All my uh, weeds get chucked in the pathway. They soon rot down. I do need to weed the pathway too now. But that's just about all weeded. It didn't take very long. All well, the mulch did a fantastic job of suppressing the weeds because this patch was quite bad. Anyway, now I've got to go into this bed and see what's happening there. You can see a heap of runner grass in this cane bed. Um, a heap of oat grass in the asparagus bed. This one in the front isn't too bad. There's a couple of more huge um, cabbages and a couple of small ones too. Let's clean this area up. I need to weed the ground ivy. That's probably the biggest pain, especially where it's not been mulched, which I don't think that area was for some reason. There's a little bit more compost that I could spread, but I probably won't because it's a rest day, so I don't feel like any heavy labour. And um, my second round of zucchinis, they're going well. They're starting to take off. And my dahlias, oh, they're starting to open. Love a bit of colour in the garden. So pretty. But you can see how much of a mess this back area is. Really need to get that grass out before it drops its seed, which it probably already has, um, into this lower area. Fun. <laughs> the walking onions are starting to walk, starting to bend over and set itself into the ground. That's really cool. They're a perennial onion. Um, probably heard about, heard me talk about them before. Uh, we love perennials. So I'm cutting um, these brassicas off at the base, and I'll probably just leave them there as organic matter. I find when I do that, they generally re-sprout and I get a second flush. Um, so that's just how I do it now. The um, zucchinis are doing re really well here. Um, I planted about 50 and maybe five survived the slugs and snails this year. They've been really, really bad. Um, that's why I planted a second round. But we started to get lots of fruit, which is awesome. And I've interplanted flowers, so I've got some dahlias, um, some amaranth, some ornamental and edible, some bells of island, and a couple of sunflowers. And Paul's just there pulling out the runner canes from the cane fruit. Um, that is the boysenberry bush. Very, very productive, but very, very prickly, and it does invade. So we need to keep on top of that one. Um, what else was I going to mention? I can't remember. That's the asparagus bed here. So um, he's just pulling out all the oat grass um, from the oat mulch that we put on. Very good mulch, but you do get a few stray oats. Better than hay, 
hay you'll just get a sea of grain um, these are easier to pull out as well um, these are seedling asparagus so I grew them from seed last year we won't be able to harvest from them um, for another two years but they're establishing in there really nicely and then of course I've got a row of dahlias there too so it should be nice and colorful at the moment it's a sea of grain um, but it will look beautiful once all those flowers are out and you can see how many berries we've got even from this far away it's fully laden and we really enjoy them <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to get to that runner grass today but you can see the difference it's made already with just a quick weed I'll probably cut that one back let's go cut this um, broccoli back it has got these tiny skinny little sprouts which is fine it's a sprouting broccoli um, but I like the fatter ones so I'm just gonna cut this off and it should regrow um, new sprouts just by pruning it like anything like flowers and stuff like that if you give it a prune it should um, produce more flowers I find that usually happens with these sprouting broccoli as well and here right by my knee is a perfect example this one is a spent broccoli but it sent up these side shoots which will form little heads and we'll probably get a few sprouts out of that so there we go nice pruned broccoli bush sprouting, sprouting broccoli bush and I've just laid everything here to mulch down adding organic matter if I can leave it in place, I will. If it's really weedy and seedy, I will throw it over the edge. Um, I probably should put it somewhere else because I still get that ground ivy growing in amongst there. Um, but I just like ease, really. I've got a big space. I've got lots to do. And so if I can do something easier, I will. And if that means throwing my weeds in the pathway, walking them on, walking on them and flooding them, flooding them, them off I can't speak today um, I will do that <laughs> and there's Rexy hey Rexy hi Rexy you're a good boy and I think puss is in the garden somewhere too some of the corn is starting to send up its male pollen spike which is pretty crazy for here in Victoria in December um, I got these in super early in my hothouse and they are thriving. I really amended this soil. I put a really thick layer of compost on and a nice layer of straw on. Um, I planted watermelons at the base to act as a ground cover. You can see they're um, starting to take off now, starting to send out a runner. Hopefully we'll get some melons from here. And I did plant some beans. A lot of them got mowed off by um, the slugs and snails that we've been having, but I did replant some, so hopefully they come up soon. I think they are. Oh, I see one. There we go. Whoops. Coming up there. And this, wow, this watermelon really is taking off. It's sending out runners everywhere. So I'll make sure I keep them in the garden bed because I don't want them to go overboard. And this is my little three sisters bed. Corn's not as tall as I thought it would be. Maybe it'll grow taller soon. I don't know. But even if we get a few cobs, that would be awesome. And I need to prune this broccoli down. You can see the side shoots um, have come up again. So that's why it's called sprouting broccoli. You get all these um, little side shoots rather than a big head that you'd find in the supermarket. So I need to get my secateurs, cut that off, chop and drop it. This is the other side. So i um, got some more broccoli there that I need to pick. But this is coriander, it's gone to seed. I'll leave it for the seed so I can collect it. I use it in the kitchen. Spinach has gone to seed. I'm gonna leave that row in and harvest the seed. Um, and then I've got eggplants through here. So I think they're starting to finally take off. Getting some flowers now, which is awesome. Um, this can get cut back. I don't have much hope for it, but you can see how these are the same, these two bushes. I cut it back. You can see all that new growth and it's gonna give me some new shoots. So it's pretty awesome, pretty awesome way to garden. Um, same with that one there. That looked exactly like this. I cut it off and got all the new growth on it, which means new shoots, new broccoli shoots. Some of my leeks are going to seed. That's fine. The bees love them. I'll collect the seeds and they look really pretty uh, when they open up. I've got some down the bottom opening up. So that's probably all I'm going to do in this bed. Cut back the straggly broccoli growth 
and I think we're good. So there you go, it doesn't take much to clean it up. Just had to prune back a couple of the broccolis and now it looks nice and tidy again, in amongst the weeds of course. <laughs> I'm not a tidy gardener, but too much space <clears throat> to have neat manicured gardens, as much as I'd love that, is just not going to happen. So this is the way that works for me. Um, and now I'm contemplating tackling this area. It's a bit overgrown. There's a few weeds in there. I'm not sure if I can be bothered, let's be honest. Hmm. Maybe quickly before lunch and then I'll go down after lunch. That was a super quick weed. I didn't get to right in the back there because too hard. <laughs> and also behind the tamarillo tree. Needs a lot of work back there, but that's not today. Um, just cleaned up this front section to neaten it up a bit. I should probably um, trim back some of this broccoli just to make it a bit neater. This isn't the place for seeds. This is the place for flowers and I also put food in here, of course. <laughs> but some things are starting to flower. Um, I'm not sure what that white one is. I'm sure someone would know. And if you do, let me know in the um, comments below. But I've got some purple salvias, some poppies. I've got the foxgloves. They keep sending up shoots as well as the snapdragons. Um, of course, my um, chai flowers. So many chai flowers. So many seeds. I need to harvest some more seeds. I've got thousands and thousands of seeds. Um, and then over here, um, I've got my lilies, the last of the lilies. Um, I've got some straw flowers um, there, that pink one. And then um, I've got a yellow dahlia in here. That's come out. And I've also got some corn flowers back there, those purple ones. So I think I might harvest some soon and bring them inside. But yeah, lots of beautiful lilies. And then... This understory should grow up and start flowering soon. Um, got uh, red vein sorrel there in the front, some marigolds, more chives bordering it. I love chives. They're pretty, they're really useful in the kitchen. Um, and some of the last the last few garlic. Sorry, I can't speak. I need a drink, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, some more brassicas. I've got cabbage and kale and some broccoli in there too. So. And some yakons that I didn't pull out, obviously. I thought I had moved all my yakons from this area um, to move them in a better spot. Um, but I think there's at least three that I missed. So that's okay. They're not ugly. So um, they work in here quite well. Some of my turmeric, which I overwintered in this big pot, is starting to pop up. So that's pretty exciting. Hopefully this will be full because I have the most wonderful flowers. Paul finished up in here and it looks amazing now. Um, he moved the compost over and he's planted some more asparagus um, seedlings in there. Um, but that's made a huge difference. So I'm not going to do a huge amount more. Um, it's getting mid up. Oh, I just saw a dahlia. <laughs> it's getting mid afternoon. And I want to get in and just rest a bit. Sundays are a crazy day for me and my day is already fully packed. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the rest of my dahlias that um, I have seedlings in my hothouse um, and a couple of tubers that have taken their time to sprout. So I'm going to plant them out. Um, I'll probably give it a really quick weed through here because it's a little bit crazy. The walkway is really weedy. I'm not going to weed that. I don't have time or the energy. Um, but I'll go through the beds quickly and pick out any um, large oak grass and plant these dahlias and then I think that's it. Um, oh, I will be planting the rest of my pumpkin seeds, filling out the pumpkin patch um, and maybe mulching that top bit. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. <laughs> but this is that dahlia that I spotted <laughs> that I got really excited about. It's a pom-pom variety. It's a gorgeous colour. Really, really love that. And you can see my gladioles are going crazy. Um, I've only got pinks and purples so far. Usually I have um, greens in there too, but not yet. You can see that the paddocks are starting to dry off, even though we've had a heap of rain. It's just the tall grass starting to dry off. So once we get a nice period of dry weather, we're supposed to do it last week, but we just didn't get around to it. We will hay this bottom paddock. Um, 
I've been trying to run the, the cows through to eat all the, the grass, but they haven't been able to keep up. So we mowed this paddock and it should come back beautiful and green with all the rain that we're having and forecast to have. Um, don't know if we'll do the same in this paddock here. It hasn't been grazed too much, but I reckon it could probably do with a mow as well. Mowing it um, mulches the ground underneath it. It feeds the soil and keeps the moisture in and then we'll get beautiful new growth like these back paddocks that are nice and green um, compared to this golden field. So um, that's what's happening in the paddocks. You can see there's not too much in here that needs doing. I do need to um, cut my brassicas back. These are a couple of years old and they just keep sending up new shoots. You can see there's more down the bottom about to come up. Um, I never knew that broccoli did that until I just chopped and dropped and then yeah they re-sprouted which was super cool. Um, these are my bush tomatoes which I probably should still stake but I was hoping that I could get away with not staking them and an abundance of pine berries the kids haven't been down here for a while so they're going off um yeah this area doesn't need too much um weeding mainly the the walkway <laughs> but just a few bits of oat grass from the um from the straw we put on top Ducklings have followed me down. <laughs> Are you looking for some food? Are you waiting for me to feed you some caterpillars and slugs? Hey? <laughs> you can see these guys in the garden. I think they're getting the strawberries. Or maybe the slugs, snails and slaters which eat the strawberries. Either way, there's enough there to share. <laughs> I have a heap of this weed here. It's sheep sorrel. You can eat it, um, put it in salads and stuff. I think it's high in oxalates, so you don't want to eat too much. Um, but I've got the red vein sorrel, which I prefer. And it's not weedy like this is. This one seems to run. It's kind of like a runner, a runner weed. Um, not as annoying as the kaikuyu grass, but still fairly pesty and annoying. So. Um, I pull it out when I can. I get a lot of runner grass in my bed. The only way you can control it is by pulling it out and pulling it out and pulling it out and pulling it out. <laughs> duck, duck, come on, duck, 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 yeah, come on, duck, duck, duck. <laughs> they must be getting the slaters. Awesome. I pulled out a weed and um, all these slaters come running out, and they're not terrible in the garden but they can um, destroy your seedlings so um, if it feeds these guys and they get rid of it then happy days <laughs> but I love that I can call them over give them treats <laughs> how cool is that we unfortunately had a couple of the ducklings die I'm not sure what happened to them but I think it's that disease that we had a few years back. Um, but these are the survivors. We've got a few more that have hatched out. So um, hopefully we can keep them all healthy, happy and alive. But they are loving those slater bugs. I think they might be fighting some worms as well. But um, yeah, so good. <laughs> this is permaculture in action. So that's this section weeded and deadheaded and it looks heaps better and I really haven't done that much. I tied up the um, tromboncinos, put out a few weeds and deadheaded and it's just cleaned it up so nicely. Really happy. I need to put that pile of weeds in one of the compost bins up here. But other than that, this section's done and I think I'm going to work on this area and... Maybe that's it. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. I'm fairly over it. <laughs> I've deadheaded most of the um, calendula. Um, pulled out some of the runner grass from where the leeks are at the back there. How pretty are the flowers. Love them. Um, 
Paul's kind of finishing up this corner for me. I deadheaded the perpetual spinach because I've got another huge bunch over there that I'm letting go to seed. I don't need all that seed. Um, yeah, so hopefully Paul will deadhead these calendula for me. I'm going to plant out these dahlias because they desperately need to be planted out and I've got a spot perfect for them. So this bed here is where I had most of my garlic. Um, you can see there's a heap of grasses coming up from the straw that we put on and that's going to be another day. But in this section here I have some melons. I've got about 24 melons, maybe a few more. I'm hoping this will be a sea of juicy delicious sweetness. And the next door are some tomatoes um, in between the weeds. Let's just pretend we don't see them. Um, and I'm going to plant the dahlias along the front here. I could have put another row of melons in, but I didn't want them to come into the pathway too much. So a row of pretty dahlias it is. You can see I've got another row of dahlias here. Only two are huge and, and flowering at the moment, but um, I'm hoping this will be really pretty. And I think I'll put a row of basil in front of the tomatoes like I did last year. Um, hopefully I can fit them all. But I love having the flowers in the veggie patch. This makes it so inviting some borage there underneath the the bin the compost bin and this is a cape gooseberry from last year it did really terribly last year but i amended the soil and it's just taken over so um we've got plenty more elsewhere but this one is my reminder bush so i walk past it i harvest some and i remember to go into the less used areas and harvest the ones from there you can see the perpetual spinach that I was telling you about how big that is and how many seeds are on it it's gonna be nuts harvesting all those seeds I'm sure I'm gonna miss some too <laughs> but now for the dahlias to go in this soil was so hard and compacted after the garlic crop I'm just gonna show you how beautiful and soft it is now so nice and loose and dark and crumbly and all I did was run the fork over um, and loosened it. I didn't turn it. I'll, um, I'll pop the link to the video in how I prep my soil here. Um, so I just forked it over. I put a layer of compost on and then I strawed over it. And it's nice and wet. We've had lots of rain though. Um, and it's soft and crumbly and beautiful and dark and rich. So there is a nice border of dahlias along this bed now which will hopefully give it some pop of color with all these melons growing in here and then I'll do that bed that bed that bed that bed and this bed another day <laughs> maybe next Saturday last job for today is planting out the rest of the pumpkin patch that sea of green that you can see some of the peas re-sprouting which is fine once the pumpkins start growing they will smother it um, so i'll just clear a patch around each seed that i'm going to plant and hopefully we get a whole lot of pumpkins next year because that is 350 square meters worth of veggie patch <laughs> you can see some of the ones we planted out a few weeks ago starting to sprout there's another big clump over there so Hopefully, 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 we get some more pumpkins in here. We're all done. So this entire area is planted out with pumpkins of all sorts of colors, shapes, and sizes, which I always look forward to harvest day when I see exactly what I've planted and harvested. So now I can go inside and rest and relax for the rest of my Sabbath Saturday. So. We used to take Sundays off, but Sundays are crazy here. Um, they're always full of errands because we pick up um, the second half of the food waste from a local large supermarket. We collect three and a half thousand litres a week and Sundays we collect a car full of bread as well. Um, and so just with all the other errands that we run on the day in town, um, it's usually full and crazy. So. Um, Saturdays are my new day of rest and I look forward to them. But I also like pottering in my garden, even 
on my day of rest because that's restful for me um, as long as it's not high strenuous work so just tinkering doing little things that need to be done like deadheading and planting seeds and stuff like that it's always quite enjoyable so I hope you enjoyed gardening with me today and I'll see you next time on living the dream of permaculture bye <laughs>